Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 15th of October. One civilian killed in ceasefire violation by Pakistan in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Afghanistan launches polio vaccination targeting 8.5 million children. And six in India celebrate birth anniversary of fourth spiritual leader. And now for all the details. Pakistan on Tuesday resorted to unprovoked firing along the line of control in India's Jammu and Kashmir, killing one civilian in Punch district. Schools in kidney sector of Punch were also closed due to heavy firing. At least one civilian lost her life in Poonch district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir after Pakistan violated ceasefire along the border on Tuesday. Pakistani troops resorted to unprovoked firing in Kirni sector of Poonch on Tuesday morning, during which schools in the area were also closed. Some students who live near the border were forced to stay in the school premises during the firing, while others were sent back home. firing <laughs> और उस फायरिंग की वजह से स्कूल जो है वो डिस्टर्ब हो गए काफी लोग जो थे वो कारोबार में आपने गैस कटाई क्योंकि असूज का मां है ये तो गैस कटाई करने लगे थे तो फायरिंग का जब चलने लगी तो वो बागे बेचारे और माल मवेशी सब बहुत परेशान है यहां पर इस एरिया में बहुत ज्यादा फायरिंग की वजह से बहुत डिस्टर्ब हो रहे हैं लोग फायरिंग सुबह से शुरू थी और पहले छुट्टी की फिर आए टीचर फिर हमें पीरियड लगा के फिर फिर पाकिस्तान की तरफ से फायरिंग हुई तो फिर हमें कुछ बच्चे जो बॉर्डर के नजदीक रहते हैं तो वो उनको स्कूल के बीच रखा हुआ है उसके बाद हम जो बॉर्डर के बॉर्डर के दूर थे वो हमें भेजा भेज दिया लास्ट वीक वन इंडियन आर्मी पर्सनल वाज इंजर्ड इन अ सिमिलर इंसिडेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तानी फायरिंग अलोंग द लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल इन रजौरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर पाकिस्तान हैज बीन रेगुलरली वायलेटिंग सीज फायर इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर दिस मंथ targeting civilian areas India accuses Pakistan of attempting to push a number of infiltrators during such ceasefire violations India's national security advisor Ajit Doval said on Tuesday that the security vulnerabilities India faces are going to be much more greater in the times to come he made a strong pitch for the modernization of the country's armed forces and intelligence networks India's National Security Advisor or NSA Ajit Doval on Tuesday said that the security vulnerabilities the country faces are much greater today and they are going to be much more greater in the times to come. He made the remarks while addressing the 41st Directors Conference at the Defence Research and Development Organisation or DRDO in New Delhi in the presence of Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and the chiefs of their Indian Armed Forces. The NSA said that India had always remained a runner up in defense technology and there are no trophies for the runner ups. In the modern world technology and finance, technology and money are the two things which are going to influence the geopolitics. Who will win ultimately will depend upon who has got the preponderance over their adversaries on these two counts. and in of the two technology is more important indian defense minister rajnath singh accompanied by the nsa and the three chiefs of the armed forces also paid tributes to former president dr apj abdul kalam on his 88th birth anniversary known as the missile man kalam was considered the father of the country's missile program Moving on Prime Minister of Pakistan and Minister at Kashmir Raja Farooq Haider Khan recently said that there are over 2000 projects which are still pending post the devastating 2005 earthquake in the region. He expressed concern that the funds they get from Islamabad are not enough. 
Prime Minister of Pakistan administered Kashmir Raja Farooq Haider Khan has said the funds his administration gets from Islamabad are not enough to complete over 2000 pending projects post the devastating 2005 earthquake in the region. He made the statement while speaking to reporters after a ceremony to remember the victims of the natural disaster in the illegally occupied region. He demanded the Pakistani government should give more funds to complete the remaining projects particularly in education and health sectors. Hame paise milte hain har saal lekin wo itne nahi hain ki jisse hum ye kaam jo hai na ye jaldi kar sake kaafi waqt guzar chuka to hame ummeed hai ki uttar pakistan isme zarurat ko mehsoos karegi aur ye fund jo hai wo ek ya do ya teen kistu mein ek dafa faraham kare taaki hum jo hai apna kaam ko mukammal kar sake aur khaas taur jo taleemi idare health ke issue pe hamare वो जो है ना वो पूरी तरह से काम कर सके अभी भी बाद इलाके जहाँ पे बर्फ में बच्चे जो है वो स्कूल में भी खुले आसमान के नीचे बैठते हैं It has been 14 years since the earthquake devastated the Himalayan region of Pakistan administered Kashmir but the victims are still waiting for relief and rehabilitation Locals blame the Stooge government only makes hollow promises and accuse Islamabad for diversion of funds given by the international community for reconstruction and development in the illegally occupied region In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's health ministry has launched an extended some national immunization campaign to give polio immunity vaccination dose to 8.5 million children under 5 years of age. The ministry on Monday said the 5-day campaign will target places where limited children were reached earlier this year. Afghanistan's health ministry has launched a campaign to give polio immunity vaccination dose to 8.5 million children across the country. The ministry in a statement on Monday announced that the 5-day campaign will target children under 5 years of age in the country's 324 districts. The campaign has been launched in most of the places where limited children were reached earlier in the year. The ministry has also called on parents to protect their children against polio by letting the vaccinators get in when they come knocking at their doors. Polio drive in Afghanistan has been launched as a fresh polio case was detected in the country late last month bringing the number of confirmed cases of polio virus to 16 since January this year. Conservators at the National Museum of Afghanistan are restoring the country's Buddhist history that the Taliban tried to erase. Taliban militant Islamic group went on a cultural rampage in 2001, destroying artifacts when many Afghans practiced Buddhism. Conservators at the National Museum of Afghanistan are restoring the country's Buddhist history that the Taliban tried to erase. Taliban militant Islamist group went on a cultural rampage in 2001 destroying artifacts from as long as the 3rd century when many Afghans practiced Buddhism The destruction that had been excavated from Buddhist monastery sites are now preserved at the Kabul Museum After the Taliban government fell the same year the museum began restoring remnants of Afghanistan's Buddhist history Sometimes conservators work from archive photos that depict the statues intact. In other cases, 3D imaging and imagination are required to sort and resemble stucco shards of Buddha faces, hands and torsos. It's more than a thousand years that we had Buddhism in Afghanistan. Uh, but what important about uh, uh, the heritage of Buddhism in Afghanistan is actually it is uh, artistic work and also Uh, how glorious uh, the monuments uh, and uh, the the sites which currently remain for us from that uh, 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 period is uh, uh, actually uh, showing a very very important part of that history 40 years of war from the 1980s soviet occupation to internal fighting and the war against the taliban have destroyed much of afghanistan's art artifacts and architecture Sri Lanka's presidential front runner Sajid Premadasa has claimed the support of the five great forces comprising Buddhist monks, doctors, teachers, farmers and laborers in the election slated to be held on November 16th. Sajid Premadasa, the presidential candidate of Sri Lanka's New Democratic Front led by the United National Party, has claimed the support of Pancha Mahabalavegya 
or the five great forces comprising Buddhist monks, doctors, teachers, farmers and labourers in the upcoming election. Speaking at an election rally on Monday, Premadasa said, the five great forces have joined hands with him and will support him no matter what people say about socialism in the country. For decades, the politics in Sri Lanka has been dominated by the Socialist Sri Lanka Freedom Party or SLFP and the Conservative United National Party of which Premadasa is the deputy leader. Premadasa is facing a challenge from former wartime defence chief and brother of former President Mahinda Rajapaksa, Gota Baya Rajapaksa, who has promised to ramp up national security and stamp out Islamist militancy. The issue is crucial in the election scheduled for November 16, following the Easter Sunday bombings that killed more than 250 people. Bangladesh observed International Day for Disaster Reduction 2019 in a befitting manner as elsewhere in the world. The day marks global efforts to promote a global culture of disaster reduction, including disaster prevention, mitigation and preparedness. As part of the event, an exhibition was held in capital Dhaka on Sunday. Bangladesh's Ministry of Disaster Management and Relief chalked out different programs including awareness campaigns and exhibitions to observe the day. The International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction held every year on October 13th was started in 1989 after a call by the United Nations General Assembly for a day to promote a global culture of risk awareness and disaster reduction. Family and friends chaired the Nobel Economics Prize awarded to Indian-born American Abhijit Banerjee. Banerjee and his wife economist Esther Dufflow are sharing the 2019 Nobel Economics Prize with Michael Kremer for the experimental approach to alleviating global poverty. Family and friends cheered the Nobel Economics Prize awarded on Monday to Indian-born American Abhijit Banerjee, whose proud mother Nirmala Banerjee told visitors crowding in her apartment that he came from a family of economists. U.S.-based economist Banerjee, his wife Astor Dufflow and Michael Kramer won the 2019 Nobel Economics Prize for their experimental approach to alleviating global poverty. Overjoyed Nirmala Banerjee showed journalists a copy of her son's book, Poor Economics, at her home in Eastern Kolkata City. I'm happy, that's it. I told you, that's it. We are very proud of Obijit and Esther. We also know Esther. Uh, she used to stay here from 98 to 2000 for a research work at Metia Buruj, Calcutta. Banerjee and Dufflo, who were sharing the prize with Michael Kramer, said they were excited about what they were doing now. 58-year-old Banerjee was educated at the University of Calcutta, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi and Harvard University, where he received his PhD in 1988. Scores of devotees on Tuesday offered prayers and took holy dips at the famous Golden Temple in India's northern Amritsar city to mark the 485th birth anniversary of Guru Ram Das, the fourth Sikh spiritual leader. Scores of devotees on Tuesday thronged Sikhism's holiest shrine, the Golden Temple in India's northern Amritsar city to mark the 485th birth anniversary of fourth Sikh Guru or spiritual leader Guru Ram Das. The devotees offered prayers, took holy dips, lit candles and also distributed sweets on the occasion. Guru Ram Das is remembered and revered for founding Chak Ram Das or Ram Das Pur, which subsequently became the holy city of Amritsar, the spiritual and political center of Sikh faith. <laughs> The Holy Book of Sikhism, Guru Granth Sahib, contains 638 hymns by Guru Ram Das, giving the message of love, peace and oneness of God. Sikhism is over 500-year-old monotheistic religion based on the teachings of its founder Guru Nanak and nine successive spiritual leaders. The majority of Sikh population in India lives in northern Punjab province. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.